Dear students, today I will discuss about capital structure. The very first question is, what is capital structure? Capital structure is the proportion of debt and preference and equity shares on firm's balance sheet. That is in the balance sheet of a company, the proportion between debt on one hand and preference and equity capital on other hand. The proportion between these two is known as capital structure. That's why otherwise it is also known as debt equity mix. Now the question is, what is optimum capital structure? Optimum capital structure is the capital structure at which weighted average cost of structure is minimum, thereby maximum the value of the firm. That is weighted capital structure, that is otherwise known as overall capital structure, where it is minimum, overall capital structure where it is minimum, so as the value of the firm is the highest. That particular point, that particular mix, that particular proportion is known as capital, optimum capital structure. Now come over to theories of capital structure. Theories of capital structure, there are certain assumptions. First, there are only two sources of funds used by the firm. One, perpetual riskless debt and ordinary share. Only perpetual riskless debt and ordinary company resorts to only these two sources of fund. No corporate tax, later on it was withdrawn, removed. Dividend payout is 100%. That is after meeting the interest liabilities, whatever balance is left in the profit account, entire amount is distributed to the equity shareholder, no amount is retained by the company. Next, there is no change in the composition of assets. As you know, assets are, com composition of assets are known as investments of the firm. They are the investments. And capital is known as source of fund, is the source of fund. So investment assets are known as investments of the firm and capital is known as the source of the fund. The financing of the firm remains constant. Financing remains constant. Firm can change the degree of leverage either by selling shares and use the proceed to retire the venture or by raising more fund and reduce the equity capital. The total financing remains the same. And the degree of leverage is changed by how? By selling shares and use the proceed by disposal of the shares and whatever amount is realized by selling the shares, that amount is used to pay off the debentures or raising more debt or vice versa. Either you increase the debt and the extra amount you use to reduce your capital or you raise the capital, equity capital and excess amount you use to pay off your debenture liabilities. So, this sort of uh, degree of leverage you can change. EBIT shall remain constant at all level. Then, business risk remains constant. 
that is that the capital structure doesn't decide doesn't affect the business risk these are the few assumptions there are two approaches to capital structure two theories one is known as net income approach other one is known as net operating income approach in the first part i will tell you net income approach net income approach has been suggested by durand he says the capital structure decision is relevant to the value of the firm in other words a change in the financial leverage will lead to corresponding change in overall cost of capital if you change the financial leverage there will be change in the overall cost of capital as well as the total value of the firm will also change tick so net income approach is based on three assumptions no tax the cost of debt is less than equity capitalization ratio that is cost of debt is less than cost of equity capital and third one use of debt does not change the risk perception of the investors three assumption no corporate tax number one number two the cost of debt is less than e cost of equity which is otherwise known as equity capitalization rate and there is no change in perception of the investor whatever is the proportion between the debt and the equity now let us explain with an example suppose a firm ebit ebit is 50000 company has debentures worth rupees 2 lakh a rate of debenture is 10% that is 10% rate of debenture 2 lakhs and the equity capitalization rate that is ke is equal to 12.5 percent now how to calculate now ebit is 50000 what the firm will do firm will first meet out its interest liability debenture worth is is The 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 the, the debenture is of how much two uh, lakhs and ten percent is the rate interest so interest is twenty thousand that is paid first how much remains thirty thousand the balance amount residue amount is thirty thousand that residue amount will be distributed to whom to equity shareholders because payout ratio is 100% the entire amount will be used to pay off the equity to, to, to pay up by way of dividend to equity shareholders so how much it is paid 30000 and capitalization rate is how much 12.5% That means 
30,000 is equal to 30,000 is equal to 12.5 percent. So 100 percent will be equal to 2 lakh 40,000. So that is equal shareholders worth rupees two lakh forty thousand rupees will be paid at the twelve point five, which comes to how much thirty thousand. So total comes to how much two lakh forty thousand, and debenture is how much two lakh. Or what is the total? What is the capital structure? Four lakh forty thousand, out of which two lakh. Debentures two lakh forty thousand equity shareholder. The cost of equity comes to how much? Cost of equity comes to how much? Cost of equity is twelve point five percent. Now come over to overall cost of capital. Ten percent means point zero. Two lakh upon four lakh forty thousand plus point one two five two forty upon. Four forty. Four forty is the total capital structure out of which two lakh is the debenture, and the rate of interest is ten percent. That is point one zero. Then plus four forty is the total capital out of which two forty is the equity capital, and rate is twelve point five or one two five. It comes to eleven point. Uh, three six eleven point three six. Now, suppose fund changes its leverage. How? What firm does? Firm raises debenture worth rupees worth rupees one lakh. So total debenture becomes how much? Two lakh previous one lakh fresh. Equity rate remains twelve point five. Twelve point five. EBIT remains fifty thousand. Now, out of fifty thousand, firm now pays how much? Ten percent to debenture holder. So, how much does it come interest? Thirty thousand. Interest comes thirty thousand. What remains? Twenty thousand for equity shareholders. Overall capital doesn't change. So what happens? It will be paid at the rate of twelve point five. 
صحابہ دزت کب ون لاکھ سکسٹی تھاؤزنڈ اوور آل کیپٹل اس تھری لاکھ سکسٹی تھاؤزنڈ ناؤ کم ٹو دی اوور آل کسٹ آف کیپٹل سوری اٹ از فور لیک فور لیک سکسٹی تھاؤزینڈ وائی فور لیک تھاؤزینڈ تھری لیکس ڈیونچر ون لیک equity shareholder it comes to how much four lakh sixty thousand so three lakh divided by four lakh six thousand multiplied by point one zero similarly one lakh sixty thousand divided by four lakh sixty thousand into point one two five it comes to 10.9 percent earlier it was 11.36 now overall cost of capital has reduced to how much 10.9 percent why has it reduced you come kyo ho gaya because because humne sasta wala کون سا سستا ہے چیپر ڈیونچر کا کاسٹ کم ہے اس کو اس کو ہم نے ڈالا ڈیونچر میں دیکھ کے جو پیسہ ہم کو ملا اس کا پریوگ ہم نے ایکوٹی شیئر ہولڈر کو میٹ آؤٹ کر دینے کر دیا کیپٹلس سے چار لکھ ساٹھ ہزار ہی رہا پر ہمارا کیا ہو گیا مکس بدل گیا وہ تین لکھ اور ایک لکھ ساٹھ ہزار ہو گیا جس سے what happened overall capital equalization, equalization rate remains 12.5 percent what happens our overall cost of capital has gone down has gone down from 10.36 percent to 10.9 percent if we take the vice versa we reduce debenture we reduce the venture humne equity 1 lakh ka liya and that 1 lakh is used to pay off the venture to our the venture kitna ho gaya 1 lakh rah gaya ٹھیک سو وین اٹ از ون لاکھ آور انٹرسٹ ہیز گون ڈاؤن ٹو ٹین پرسینٹ انٹرسٹ ہیز گون ڈاؤن ٹو ٹین پرسینٹ ٹین تھاؤزینڈ ای بی آئی ٹی ہمارا اتنا ہی رہا بٹ انٹرسٹ ہیز گون ڈاؤن ٹو ٹین ٹین تھاؤزینڈ سو ہمارا وہ کتا رہا بیلنس کتا بچا ہمارا ہاؤ مچ از دا بیلنس لیفٹ بیلنس لیفٹ از فورٹی تھاؤزینڈ روپیز فورٹی تھاؤزینڈ روپیز پچاس ہمارے دس سار روپے کے کتے چلے گئے فورٹی تھاؤزینڈ ٹیک پچاسا تھا ای بی آئی ٹی ہم نے ایک لاکھ روپے کا ایکوڈی شہر ایشو کر کے وہ پیسہ لے کے ہم نے ڈیونچر کو پیک کر دیا تو ہمارے ڈیونچر واقعی کتے رہ گئے ایک لاکھ ان کو دس پرسنٹ دیا گیا ہمارے دس ہزار تو رہا ہمارا کتنا کتنا رہا ایک لاکھ میں سے پچاسا میں سے دس ہزار گئے بچے کتنے چالیس ہزار روپے 
चालीस हजार रुपए आप अब किसको बांटेंगे इक्विटी शेयर होल्डर को कैपिटल इक्विलाइजेशन रेट कितना है कॉस्ट ऑफ कैपिटल कितना है 12.5 परसेंट सो इट कम्स टू थ्री इट कितना हुआ आपका ये आपका हो गया तीन लाख बीस हजार ये कितना हो गया तीन लाख बीस हजार और ओवरऑल कॉस्ट ऑफ कैपिटल ओवरऑल आपका कितना हो गया चार लाख बीस हजार तीन लाख बीस का ये एक लाख का आ, आ, एक लाख का आपका डिवेंचर तीन लाख बीस हजार का ये तो ओवरऑल कितना हुआ चार लाख बीस हजार रुपया और कॉस्ट ऑफ कैपिटल कितना आया कॉस्ट ऑफ कैपिटल आया देखिए ये आ गया एक लाख अपॉन चार लाख बीस हजार उसके बाद तीन लाख बीस हजार अपॉन तीन लाख बीस हजार अपॉन चार लाख बीस हजार अपॉन वन पॉइंट टू फाइव इट कम्स टू हाउ मच इलेवन पॉइंट नाइन परसेंट देखिए ओवरऑल टोटल ओवरऑल कॉस्ट ऑफ कैपिटल बढ़ क्यों गया इसलिए बढ़ा क्योंकि आपने सस्ता जो कैपिटल है उसको राइट right, उसको आपने पे ऑफ कर दिया और आपने महंगा कौन सा था इक्विटी को लेके सस्ते डिवेंचर को आपने पे ऑफ कर दिया इसलिए आपका ओवरऑल कॉस्ट ऑफ कैपिटल क्या है वो बढ़ गया सो नेट इनकम अप्रोच यही बताता है कि यदि अप्रोच ये बताता है कि कॉस्ट ऑफ डेट शुड बी लेस देन कॉस्ट ऑफ इक्विटी तब ओवरऑल कॉस्ट ऑफ तब आपका मैक्सिमम बेनिफिट किसको जाएगा शेयर होल्डर्स को जाएगा जिससे क्या होगा कि आप शेयर होल्डर्स का पर शेयर डिविडेंड क्योंकि आप डिविडेंड पे आउट हंड्रेड परसेंट रख कर रहे हैं सो पर शेयर होल्डर डिविडेंड विल सर्टनली इंक्रीज दिस इज नोन एज नेट इनकम अप्रोच दिस कंप्लीट द फर्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ योर कैपिटल स्ट्रक्चर थेरी थैंक यू ठीक